Hello and welcome to the book show on diversity television. I'm Ava Colby, a writer of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. My work often focuses on social issues and how they play out in family dramas. We are here in Ireland, the land of literature, of higher education, and some of you out there may not know, it is the land of a second Silicon Valley, which is in sort of the Grand Canal docks area of Dublin too, in the city center. Uh, what we in the U.S. might want to call downtown. So there are many jobs to be had here and many people come here to Ireland for their excellent higher education at their very many uh, universities, colleges, tech centers and all that sort of thing and then hit the job market and uh, like me after I finished my MBA don't really know how to go about it and don't really necessarily understand yet just how much things have changed in even the past five years for job hunting where it uh, has a lot to do with keywords and how you use your LinkedIn. So to that end, I'm going to talk today about this book that I uh, got recently called Advanced LinkedIn, Attract Opportunities with the Use of LinkedIn by Building an Optimized Profile, Creating Content, and Constantly Engaging with Decision Makers by Felipe Lodi from Brazil. Very bold of him writing a book in his second language. That takes some guts, so definitely applaud him for that right there. So he was actually at a event recently, a networking event that I was at because I was at the last place where I got another uh, qualification, which is IBAT College in Dublin city center. I did a supply chain management course and he was at the event and did a very good speaking on it. Before that, I had actually seen some of his videos on YouTube where he's talking about how to optimize your profile. So um, what some of you may have noticed or may not have noticed, it may, you may be in the situation that I was about a year and a half ago of not knowing how exactly to generate interest in yourself as a candidate for a job. Now, maybe like me, you've got the, the work experience on the job market, you've got skills, and then you have your, your educational attainments and you're wondering why am I not getting the results that I, that I want and that I think I should be getting uh, given my skills and experience. And the answer, as it turns out, um, as I've begun to notice with some recruitment agencies, but um, quite frankly, most of them, and they'll remain nameless, they were, they were quite rude and unhelpful and just really not nice to deal with. Uh, there was one or two that actually gave me some really, some really useful advice about how um, a lot of what's done with your work history comes down to how you're wording it, how you're telling the story of your life and maybe why you went from one job to another, or if you switched industries, why you did that. And a lot of it is in a, with a lot of these um, different workplaces, what they're doing is they're running your work history, your CV, or in my country, your resume through a computer system and if it doesn't have all the keywords they're looking for, boom, you're out. They're not even, not, no human beings even going to look at it. So you, you may or may not know about that, but it doesn't mean you necessarily know how to reward things in your work history to get the results that you're kind of trying to go for. And that is the kind of thing that he gets into with his book where he's talking about things like keywords, the language you use, how to make it more engaging, and even how to bring out skills that you have that you may not have thought of as something that you should be listing in your work history. And he even gets into it if you're someone who's like fresh out of university and you ha maybe haven't had a job before, but he says, well, you've done other things. And he gets into some discussion about how you can bring out some of those skills and bring them to people's attention because you may have useful skills for the job market that you don't really realize yet. So rather than talk about the book, I'm just going to read you an excerpt of it to give you an idea of what it's like because it is very conversational and very engaging. So, I bet you're thinking about the risk of using something new and being bold on the network. I will tell you that this is what this book is all about, being different and audacious, standing out. I will keep telling you that throughout the book, because this is what I believe, not only am I proof that this brings results, but I am also a natural advocate of leaving the bubble. I lived this life for years and years as the IT professional who grew baby steps and made a living. I was in my comfort zone. I never kept quiet where I worked, though, but concerning social media, I had always taken a conservative approach, partly because I left Brazil and succeeded abroad. I didn't want to show the people still there that winning does not require a finish line. 
I remember winning when I rang my wife to tell her that I had a passport renewed at 10 years before boarding the British Airways flight uh, to move to Belgium. That meant a lot to me. I wish I had documented it all using social media. I never had the profile of a bragging person, but now I realize that bragging is a thing and those who don't use it are left behind. We follow these celebrities online. Most of them have never starred in Hollywood movies. They become celebrities for playing what I call bragging marketing. They fly private, ride a Ferrari, and speak on stage to 3,000 people. The latter resonates better to me uh, than their material things. We cannot deny how powerful showing off is and how the internet and social media are taken by it nowadays. It is giving people what they want. On a daily basis, people fall short on selling themselves. They cannot pitch what they do. Most of them cannot even go beyond the term coined by society to label what they do. I am a developer. I am a nurse. I work in events. Ah, so lame. Put some more adjectives on it and the value you bring to the table. And you've got yourself a tagline or headline as called on LinkedIn. So I ask, why aren't you being bold when explaining what you do? You are faced with this question way more than you think. You are presented with this question when you need the will to exercise in the morning. You are presented with this question when someone talks with you in the elevator. You are presented with this question when you meet a new person when waiting for your kid to finish her judo class. If you want to be labeled and belong to a group or a class of professionals, you will be limited to the salaries they get and to the list of leads people who downloaded your ebook from your website. A label will limit you. A tagline will widen your horizons. You will see their eyebrows raise when you deliberately say that you make companies save money or that you save lives for a living. Bold, isn't it? It is another approach. So highlighting that again earlier, he said, someone might say, I am a nurse. So for example, on their LinkedIn, that might be nurse. They have their name and then their job title. And he's saying for what uh, LinkedIn calls a headline, it would be better to say something like, I save lives for a living. I save lives, that is my value. So he gets you to think about the things in new ways. Now that's just one little example. He knows a ton about the subject and is very happy to share it with everyone. So this is a very useful book for uh, not just the specific little bits of advice, but it's a way of changing your thinking about how you're approaching these things, which can be very useful in actually helping you to stand out to recruiters and get a better job. So that is what I am recommending today, Felipe Lodi with Advanced LinkedIn. So thank you for watching the book show on Diversity Television. Uh, I'm Ava Colopy here in Ireland, and I hope you will join us again next time for more books and opinions. To all our viewers out there, I hope you find what you're looking for. Disinformation is spreading alongside the new coronavirus. To counter this, it is important to share information that comes from reliable sources, such as health authorities and the World Health Organization. During the COVID-19 outbreak, only trust official information sources and credible media outlets. Do not share unverified information. This is a message from UNESCO.